I'm going to move on to another new film out this week. This one is getting a lot of awards attention. And uh, this film is Maestro. And in Maestro, um, we are in the world of Leonard Bernstein, the famous composer, conductor, educator, homosexual Jew, who um, gained great acclaim in the world of music in the US, but he led a somewhat controversial and difficult life with his wife, Felicia, played by Carrie Mulligan. Here's a clip. If summer doesn't sing in you, then nothing sings in you. And if nothing sings in you, then you can't make music. Something she told me. Hello, I'm Lenny. Hello, Felicia. So, um, I found this a really difficult film to review. I've just posted my review on One Man's Movies. Because um, technically, it, it, it is really great. It is a really well-made film. Um, the performances, Bradley Cooper there, you saw, he goes from young man, blue-eyed boy, <laughs> to this old chain-smoking um, man. How he ever got to the age he got to, given the number of cigarettes he smokes, every single <laughs> scene, every single scene, I think, in the film, he had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. I mean, I've never seen a film where there was more smoking, right? Yeah. It probably earned its 15 certificate for the cigarette use more than anything else in the film because <laughs> actually there is a bit of drug taking and so on and, and a bit of bad language and uh, racial and homophobic slurs. But it's actually a fairly soft 15. I thought it was more kind of a 12 to 15 in terms of the rating other mm -hmm. than that. Um, so he was... He was absolutely superb, I have to say. The hair and makeup for him in transitioning him there was, was self-evident. He looks like Bernstein, mm. and it was brilliant. And Carrie Mulligan, you saw there, she came out of the shadows looking like some 40s Judy Garland star from the golden age of Hollywood. I mean, I love Carrie Mulligan anyway, and her acting in this film is just, I thought, superb. So... <laughs> And the directing is fantastic as well. Like a lot of the time, the way in which he, he uh, Bradley Cooper not only starred in it, but he directed it as well and he co-wrote it. He uses the colour really well. So it goes from a beautiful black and white in the early days through to a colour. And he also changes the screen format as the film uh, goes through as well. So at points it's 4-3 Academy ratio then it goes widescreen and you hardly notice when it's doing it but it's quite cleverly done and the way in which he transitions from scene to scene like he'll there are some very clever cuts in this film where he'll be he'll be walking outside and he'll go inside Carnegie Hall or he'll he'll walk through a doorway and it'll all change so so the way in which it's constructed and so on I thought was was really very clever indeed uh, and uh, the cinematography, um, that, that crisp black and white was uh, Matthew Labitek, uh, is the cinematography. I thought that was, that was terrific, right? But I didn't really like it. Right? I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> There's a big but here. And I, it just didn't really engage me as, as a movie. Uh, I thought it was all very clever. The illustrious Mrs. Movie Man thought the same thing. She actually used the dreaded P word, pretentious, right, <laughs> to describe it, which I never use in a review anymore because I get shit thrown at me <laughs> from various people if I say, pretentious, how dare you? Um, but I can let the illustrious Mrs. Mo Movie Man use it. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I found myself, it's like two hours and ten minutes long, something like that, and towards the end I found myself glancing at my watch right? Uh, it just didn't grab me, it didn't engage me um, enough for it yeah. to really be a great movie in my head, which, which which makes it really interesting film to watch for the award season, because as I said, for 
for, for the acting and for the direction and possibly for the cinematography, I think it could get nominated um, for Oscars. Hair and makeup, it might get nominated for Oscars. And, and if it won those, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with it winning those. But as a film overall, just didn't do it for me. In the end, I gave this a rather measly six out of ten. So um, I think we could maybe do some more people watching this one. It's, it's on Netflix from the 20th of December, I think, which is a week tomorrow. So if more people get a chance to, to watch Maestro, maybe we can, we'll revisit that score and see if, <laughs> um, I, see, if, see if I was just in a bad mood. But uh, for Maestro, it's a flickering dream score just based on my uh, view of 7 out of 10, which makes it a... Um, no, 6 out of 10. The score. No, 6 out of 10. Scratch that. <laughs> Scratch that and reverse it, as Wonka would say. Um, 6 out of 10, which makes it a marginal miss <laughs> for me, I'm afraid. Didn't expect to say that. See that, I have to say. Mm -hmm.